Hello guys, the Maniac Zach here. Breath of the Wild. Holy crap. This game? As of this video, I put in 60 hours in it. 60! And I've been playing it ever since it came out. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a lot compared to other people who have already put in 100 plus hours in this game. But I normally don't put in 60 hours in a game in a single month. That shows how incredible this game truly is. I'm just going to put this game back. Recently, IJ Numa stated that future Zelda games are going to be like Breath of the Wild. And I thought to myself, is there anything from Breath of the Wild that could be improved in future Zelda games or in a Breath of the Wild sequel? And I thought, hell yeah. So here are my top five things that I like to see improved from Breath of the Wild in a Breath of the Wild sequel. Grab your Master Sword and your Hylian Shield. Because we're about to begin. Number 5 Voice Acting In Breath of the Wild, voice acting is one of the greatest innovations to the Legend of Zelda series, since in most of the games, there's just a lot of text boxes and dialogue, and that still happens in this game, but not as often. However, some of the main characters' voices, especially Zelda's, are pretty bad. I mean, come on! When I think of Zelda, I don't imagine her voice being as deep as it is in Breath of the Wild. I mean, come on! Her Japanese voice fits her character much better. And the character that you play as, Link, doesn't even speak at all! I mean, come on! I know that Nintendo wants to keep the tradition of making Link a silent protagonist, but it just seems off that every other main character speaks and Link doesn't. In a Breath of the Wild sequel, or in a future Zelda game, it would be nice if Link was given some lines and wasn't 100% a silent protagonist, like Master Chief from the Halo series. And wouldn't it be cool if you could switch between the Japanese and English voices in the options menu, similar to Xenoblade Chronicles? That would be pretty cool, especially since some of the voices in the Japanese version of Breath of the Wild sound a hell of a lot better than in the English version, and I'm not just talking about Zelda. Now, I put this at the bottom of the list because voice acting doesn't need to be improved as much as some of the other options on this list. And Link technically speaks when you're talking to NPCs, so there wouldn't be a point in giving Link a full voice anyways, you know? Number 4 Make the music more memorable like in previous Zelda games. Throughout its 30 plus year history, The Legend of Zelda has created so many iconic tunes, whether if it's the Great Fairy Fountain theme from the original one on the NES, or if it's Song of Storms from Ocarina of Time on the N64. Almost every single Zelda game has a great and iconic song to listen to. One of the most shocking things about Breath of the Wild is that most of the music doesn't stand out too much, especially when you're roaming around the open world areas. And while the absence of ambient music provides the game with more realism, especially with the sound effects, it just feels off in certain moments. And when there is music in the game, no matter how catchy it is, it just doesn't really stick out to me too much after I'm done playing the game. The only exceptions I have are the stables theme, the shrine theme, and the battle themes in the open world and against a guardian. And the creators of Xenoblade Chronicles, Monolith Soft, helped develop Breath of the Wild. And while Xenoblade Chronicles is an RPG and not an open world game like Breath of the Wild is, that game had large, expansive areas that had music that complemented them really well and helped immerse me into the game even more. So if these guys were to come back to help develop the next Zelda game or a Breath of the Wild sequel, it would be nice if they spent more time and make the music a little more memorable and immersive. Number 3 More major dungeons, as well as make them more difficult than they are in this game. Now what do I mean by this, you may ask? Let me explain. In Breath of the Wild, there are 120 shrines, which are basically like mini dungeons and while it is cool to feel like you're playing small parts of dungeons in short bursts especially if you're playing this game in handheld mode honestly the fact that we only have four major dungeons each for the divine beasts it it just feels off compared to the rest of the zelda series i would also like these dungeons to be more like previous zelda games because all the divine beast dungeons are are basically just like activating terminals and fighting a boss at the end. 
And while, yeah, it is kind of similar to the previous Zelda games, since it's mainly puzzle-focused, it would be nice if there was more variety in them. Like, if the dungeons could be designed around specific runes, or the new runes that I mentioned earlier. Or maybe if there could be more combat-based segments, like if you have a giant enemy that you have to use stasis on, and you have to launch him to hit a target and get a chest or something, you know? Number two. Make materials more useful. Now, in Breath of the Wild, besides getting a lot of rubies and excelsiors, a lot of these materials that you defeat from enemies don't really have that much of a purpose. And since I personally don't make that mu much excelsiors, I just have like hundreds and hundreds of common materials saved from defeating thousands of mobins, of bokoblins, and the choo choo guys, and all those other enemies, it gets really annoying and cluttering, you know? So what if there was a crafting system in the game where you can take materials and items and put them together to make new weapons slash items similar to Minecraft? And similar to cooking, players will be encouraged to see what weapons and items they could make from different combinations of materials. Wouldn't that be awesome? And when I got Breath of the Wild and I saw the back of the box and I saw the words craft your own survival I assumed that meant that there was a crafting system like this but I was sadly mistaken hmm. Number one. Fix item durability. Oh, oh my god. This is one of the major criticisms that everyone's had of Breath of the Wild, and I totally agree. In Breath of the Wild, there are three ways for you to tell how much durability your weapon has left. There's the star, which means, good job, you just got this weapon from a chest or an enemy. You're all set. Use it freely until it eventually breaks. Then there's no star, which means no matter how much you've swung it, you have used it at least once. And then there's the red flash, which means, uh-oh, your weapon's badly damaged. Be careful when using it before it breaks. <laughs> womp womp. It just sucks when I'm fighting against a powerful enemy like a Lionel or a Walking Guardian and I have to use a powerful weapon like a Royal Broadsword and I go slash 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 and I keep doing it until it says it's badly damaged because I'm always worried about how much more I can use it before it eventually breaks. It really stresses me out. So to relieve the stress, what if there was a durability bar for each weapon similar to Minecraft? So instead of constantly thinking about how much more I can use each weapon in my inventory before I fight an enemy, this will be so much easier with the durability bar. So I can know, oh, I can use my Royal Broadsword because it's all green. Or, oh, I gotta be careful when using the spear because it's red and it's about to die. Because the three signs in Breath of the Wild that I mentioned earlier aren't really helpful, honestly. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you could use the metals you've gathered throughout the world and use them to repair your weapons in like an anvil similar to Minecraft? Because I know that in Breath of the Wild there are certain weapons and shields that you can replace like the light scale trident, and this is a great step in the right direction. However, I think a majority of the weapons should be repaired and not just a select few, you know? Anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you want to look at the other Zelda video that I did, click on the card or way onto the very end of the video for the end card link to the review I made on Link's Crossword Training for Switch Month. It's pretty interesting and I think you guys will enjoy it. And if you want to see the previous video and don't really care about Zelda, then click on the card or way onto the very end of the video again for the second podcast live stream archive that I made with Furious Rants. And if you want to watch a video that's not on my channel at all for some reason, 
then check on my buddy KLTM's top six things I want in Mario Odyssey. Now, I know I made a similar video, and I know his is inspired by mine, but he's a cool dude, and he has different ideas than me that you guys might find interesting, so why don't you check it out, you know? Be sure to subscribe to be notified when future videos will be released. Also, follow me on my Twitter account, at TheManiacZack, to be notified when videos will be released, as well as some exclusive behind-the-scenes content on this channel and more. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.